able to go. And that's why today, Bishop Bright, Missionary Daudi, Pastor Sue, Pastor Munene, we are where we are because we have a father who knows how to mentor his children, who knows how to position his children for the international doors. Amen. Glory be to God. Why can't we give that man together with the wife, wherever they are, a good hand clap in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Bishop, we love you. Bishop Bright, if I were to talk about him, I would talk so much. You are not only a brother, you are a friend. God has used you to speak mightily in my own life. Overcomers ministry of which I am the founder. God sent you there about five years ago. I still remember your message about fatherhood, which was full of power and anointing and liberation. Thank you so much, Bishop. And again, when God brought you here, we did not know that God was sending you ahead like he did to Joseph because he knew that your brother, your young brother is coming and he requires the Josephs to be sent ahead. You are such a blessing in my life, my family, and my ministry. We love you so much. Thank you so much for your love, Bishop. The Lord bless you so much. And of course, my friends, uh, Missionary Daudi, together with uh, Monica, thank you so much for coming to be together with us. We are very, very grateful. The Lord bless you so much. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your sacrifice to Nawapenda. Monica, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Missionary Daudi, you have been a great blessing in my family. Since when I came to the U.S., you know, I did not know that God will use you in such a great way. You know, I mean, the things of God are just amazing. He doesn't get tired. Every week we connect with Daudi in one way or the other. You know, I actually I remember when I came to the U.S., the first person who taught me how to drive was Daudi. I'm a good driver in Kenya, but in the U.S. I had to be taught how to drive. And uh, he is the first one who taught me how to drive in the U.S. And, and, and we give God all that. Daudi, tumpigie my coffee. Thank you so much. We love you. Thank you so much for your love. Now, Pastor Sue is together with us. And we can't have enough of Pastor Sue. And for sure, I would have wanted to speak. But I thought, let her start now. Let us start when? Now. now. Then we have a break of 15 minutes. Yes. And then we continue. Yes. Mpango iko sawa? Kwa nini meniangalia na muna gani? Nasema, yu mpango iko sawa? Aanse saizi? Yes. Nani wana makubalia na mimi aanse saizi? Yes. Eh, hey, sawa, sawa. Bas, ni mkonotu ya keirikuwa chini. Hiyo ingine yote irikuwa juu. Sasa, tumekubalia na zote. Aanse sangapi? Saizi. So, ahubiri 45 minutes. I have to talk about the break to engage us at the other session that you have been waiting for time. Wehoke is a witness that he has been waiting. Where is the wife of Wehoke? I love that girl. Ah, this woman, she's a wonderful woman. Can we celebrate her in Jesus' mighty name? Wehoke, wewe uriangukia. Wewe, wewe uriangukia in dunia. Mungu, mungu alikuoneka. Hata kama shetani alikuwa akuhingeshe, ukiwa na huyu, utaenda bali. Si mungu sana. Lakini tu nikimwangalia naona anakaa mama wa Mungu, mama wa roho, upendo mingi, kupenda familia, kupenda kazi ya Mungu. Hiyo ni mtu ambaye anakaa Mungu anaweza tumia sana. Uh, I have no doubt about it. Praise the Lord. And we love you. We met your husband in Kenya. We never knew him and we are glad that he has been patient. All this waiting, you know, it is not easy to wait. Eh? We came here in the month of March and this is the time we are now getting connected. Since the month of March you know, yeah, the Bible says, they that wait, shall, you know, <laughs> yes, yeah, so we hope you'll be blessed in a great way. Thank you so much. Shall we stand up on our feet this uh, afternoon in Jesus' name? God gave me a gift, and uh, I want to thank God that uh, my wife, Pastor Sushi, is not only just a mother. But she is 
you know, God has used her for the international healing of many men and women, including here in America. I remember yesterday we were in a couples meeting, you know, which went from noon all the way to around what time we were living there, late at night, eight. You know, I didn't know that in America people can do couples meeting from midday, six hours, all the way to eight. And then before yesterday, we were in a singles uh, meeting that learned again from 7 to 2 a.m. in the morning. You know, singles meeting. We've been doing meetings all over, all over, and, and we are so grateful to God. And God has used her in such a great way to minister in, in these sessions, in these meetings. And even today, I have no doubt, Bishop, through the same anointing, God will use her in such a great way. Pastor Sushi is uh, my wife, the mother to my children, and a minister of the gospel. Amen. Without taking more time, Pastor, I want you to come and speak that which God has put in your life to these people. Put your hands together in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Karibu sana. Thank you. Thank you. Our Father and our God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you this hour of the morning. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we worship you. We pray that God Almighty, even as we hear your word, your word is going to bring renewal, is going to bring energy, is going to bring focus in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And so we thank you for the enduring presence of the Holy Spirit who gives us the articulation of the word of God and he helps us to be doers of the word. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' majestic name we have prayed and believed. Amen. Amen. You can comfortably have your seats in Jesus' name. Um, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, this morning, I am born again. Jesus is Lord in my life. I want to thank God for the opportunity that we have had to come to the Springs of Life Worship Center, where one of our bishops, Bishop Bright, uh, has been here, and we are so glad for the good work that he's doing for the Lord. And we pray for more grace in kingdom service in Jesus' name. I also want to thank God for Pastor Monene. Thank you so much for the support that you have always given me and also for mentoring me in spiritual things and in all things that makes me to be complete in Christ. Praise the Lord. So I want to thank you so much. Thank you for the support of all the people who are listening to us today. We believe that God is going to bless you today in Jesus' name. I want to believe that Pastor Monene, our people on Facebook, our pages are connected to us to make sure that uh, they receive the word of God because the, it's the word that makes life move on. Yeah. So I think we hope you can assist Pastor Monene on that. Make sure that, uh, wow, thank you so much. Today, <clears throat> we want to learn about the importance of the word of God in your life. The importance of the word of God in your life. The importance of the word of God in my life. Praise the Lord. And I want to say that when something is not known, the importance of it, most of the times it is misused. But when we know the importance of something, then we value it. The reason why people value dollar is because you know dollar is money that can help you meet your needs and you're able you know to use it for your for your for your benefit and because of that it is impossible for you to find dollars you know on the streets of america because it is a precious commodity when seen by someone praise the lord praise the lord Amen. yeah that's why it's very rare to get a dollar to get a kenya shilling a thousand just lying anywhere because money we have known right from when we were young that money is important. Praise the Lord. And because of that, you don't find money anywhere, just lying anywhere. It must be in a, in a, in a, in a safe place. Even right now, some of us who are seated here, we are very conscious where we have kept our money. And especially if it's a lot of money, you keep on touching it because you know the importance of money. Praise the Lord. And so today we want to learn about the importance of the word of God so that in the same vein, the way we are conscious about money, the way we are conscious about other things, we can also be conscious about you know the word of God in us and I want to say that the word of God and God are one 
you cannot separate God from his word, neither can you separate the word from God. When we talk about God's word, we are talking about God himself, because God has expressed his thoughts through his word. And the word of God that helps us is not the word in the Bible, is not this word that is in papers. The word of God that helps every believer is the word of God that is in your heart, the word of God that is in your mind, and the word of God that is controlling your tongue. Praise the Lord. Amen. Very important organs. So the purpose of the word of God is not just, you know, in the written, in the book. And I'm sure we have so many Bibles in our, in our homes. And so when it is there on the shelves, it might not help you. But this word was meant for you to read it, you study it, and then after that you act on the word of God and become a partaker of what the word of God says because the word of God is God. And so uh, number one, a very important point that we need to know is number one, you are born of the word. That is in the book of First uh, Peter 1.23. First Peter 1.23. Some, I hope the word of God is being projected. Where is the word for me to read? I need somewhere to read. Oh, First Peter, First Peter one twenty three. Are you there? Has it been projected? Thank you, thank you so much. It kindly be fast so that we can go together and be blessed together in Jesus' name. So, number one, the importance of the word of God is number one, you are born of the word. I am born again by the word of God. Praise the Lord. That's why the, the word of God is very important. So, can we read the word of God? One, two, we read. Being born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which he liveth and abideth forever. So according to 1 Peter 1.23, you are born again by the word of God, which he lives and abides forever. Praise the Lord. And how did this word come to you? This word came to you through the hearing, the preaching of the word of God. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Romans 10 verse 17, that the faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So one of the things that must be in your mind and in your heart and in every day of your life, you must know that the importance of the word of God is because number one, you are born again or you are born unto God. You are connected to God by his word. Praise the Lord. And that's very, very, very important. Very important. And when you know that, then you value the word. You give it value because you know you hail from the word. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I hail from the word. I'm an offspring of the word. Hallelujah. And so the word of God must lead my thinking. The word of God must lead my heart. My, the word of God must lead my body. My, the word of God must lead my talking. In other words, when, the, the, when you have talked the whole day, if we were to measure how much you have talked of English and how much you have talked of your native language, then the word of God should be more because you are born again. You hail from the word of God. Hallelujah. So being born again by the word of God. And when this word of God that gave you salvation, it, it delivered, the word of God is not dead. The word of God is alive, alive in you, alive in your mind, alive in your heart alive in your doings in your family and then the bible says it abides forever in other words the word of god has not come you know to to stay in us to visit in us it has come to have permanent residence in our hearts praise the lord how important then the word of god is wow. hallelujah Amen. hallelujah and how does this word come in the book of romans romans 10 verse 8 we're gonna see what the word of god says romans 10 verse 8 Romans 10, oh, thank you, thank you, sir. Even, the, even in thy mouth, in thy heart, that is the word of faith, which we preach. And that's what I'm preaching today. You are born of the word. And so the Bible says, this word is near you. So the word is no longer now, the word should not be far from you. Because this word is near you, it should be in your mouth, it should also be in your heart. And this
word of God that you have now believed. And the Bible says that's the way to be saved. So if you're here and you're not born again, you have to obey the two principles. You have to believe the word and then you have to confess. We have people who say that I believe in the word of God from Genesis to Revelation, but it's not a must for me to keep telling anyone. Let me tell you the truth, you are going against the word of God. When you believe the word of God, it must be continually in your mouth. Amen. That's the way we know that you are born again. Praise the Lord. So you find because we were not well taught about the importance of the word of God, we shy from confessing, declaring, speaking out the word of God that already God has put in us. How can you refuse to speak something that already you have received? The Bible tells us that we have already received this word because the word of God that has come into us has also brought faith. Then verse, uh, verse 10 says what? For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So what do you do? You believe with your heart. You don't believe with your mind. Your mind cannot believe. Your mind was not created for you to use it for believing. So you can't believe with your mind. You believe with your heart. And then after you believe with your heart, the Bible says you, you, are, you, you confess with your mouth and from there salvation is consummated. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you believe with your heart. So God has given you a heart. And we are not talking about the physical heart that pumps blood. No, we are talking about your human spirit, the image of God in you. Praise the Lord. That is the part in you that contacts God. The reason why God has given you the human spirit, it is because that's the only part in you that is able to communicate to God directly. The purpose of your mind is to be able to be conscious about the world. The purpose of your body is conscious about self. You as human spirit is conscious to God. Your mind is conscious to the environment, to the world. Your body is conscious to self. That's why you are called Susan Monene and you stand up. We call you Bishop Bright, you stand up. Because you are conscious to self. Praise the Lord. Then in, the word of God is very important. And I want to say that this is the way to receive every God's blessings in our lives. If you want healing... If you want any type of blessing, you've got to believe it and then confess it. Are you sick? You need to believe your healing, then keep confessing your healing and you shall be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do you need deliverance? You believe that the word of God has delivered you. In fact, that's what the Bible says in the book, in the book of Colossians 1 verse 27 that God has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. So when I believe that, then I keep on confessing I'm delivered, I'm delivered. What happens? That which I am confessing becomes a reality in my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Importance of the word of God. I'm born of the word of God. Hallelujah. Verse 11. For the scripture has said, whosoever believeth on him shall never be put to shame. So one of the reasons why we are seeing born again people, you know, having shame in their lives, having shame in their families, in their relationship, it is because we have kept the word of God away from our lives. Yet we hail from the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does verse 14 say? The same scripture, we are talking of the importance of the word of God in a believer. How then shall they call on God in whom they have not believed? You cannot call God in whom you have not believed. And that's why sometimes, you know, uh, people are in an accident and you find even those who don't know God, they call God. You cannot call a God you have not believed. Because our God wants us to have a relationship with him so that we can have a constant way of maintaining our friendship with him. So you can't call on God whom you have not believed. And that's why you find some people when they get danger, they remember their mom because they, mommy, because they believe in their mom more than the word of God. So you can't call on God whom you have not believed. So when you believe in God, anytime you have challenges, the first person who says, Jesus, oh my God, 
Because you have believed in God. And only God can remove you from that situation in Jesus' name. And then it says, and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So for you to believe, you need to hear. You need to hear the word. Not any other thing. You need to hear the word. Because you are born of the word. You need to keep on hearing the word daily. Daily, my friend. So that now you are believe, your faith can grow. Such that when you call upon the name of the Lord, he hears you. I don't know whether you have had friends who you were once very close. And after that, they lost contact with you. But any time they have a financial need, that's when they call you. How do you feel? You feel misused. That's the same way if, you, if we human, we feel misused by friends who have not maintained a good relationship. But anytime they need financial need, that's when they remember us. You always feel let down, isn't it? And probably you have that money to help them. But because they always call you and you have marked that, when you see this phone, you know they're asking for money. You feel, you feel discouraged. So how then? What about our God? We cannot use God when we need him. And when we feel we are okay, we have no business with his word. No. So he says, how shall they call on God on whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And that's why we have come today. Because we are the preachers of the gospel. We must come and announce that you are born of the word. We must come and announce the importance of the word of God in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. We have known so much importance of other things, but we have forgotten the importance of the word of God in our lives. So it is very important for you to be a woman and a man of the word. Amen. So my question is, how much quantity of the word of God have you deposited in your heart? Have you deposited in your spirit so that in the hour of need, you can draw it out and use it so that you can have, you know, success in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then the Bible says, verse 17, of the same. So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So the God kind of, you know, faith can only be gotten by you, can only grow spiritually by hearing and hearing the word. But look at it. We are living in a world of social media. We hear so much about the world and little of the word. We have made Sunday to be the only place where we come and, we come and hear the word of God for 30 minutes. You know, for, when it goes so far, is one hour and we are already tired. But from Monday to Saturday, we, we have no time for the word. But the Bible says, if you're going to grow and have, you know, the success that God wants you to have, brethren, we've got to make the word of God the only thing that matters in our lives. And making the word of God the only thing that matters is making God. Because God and his word are one. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And this is what I want to challenge you and myself. How many times, we, we all have 24 hours. In that 24 hours, how many minutes have you kept every day to make sure that you study the word of God? To make sure that you hear the word of God? Hearing is like putting the preaching of your pastor, of your bishop, and listen to it to that because, so that your faith can grow. Hallelujah. Because without hearing the word of God, nature does not allow vacuum. You are either full of the word or full of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we must be deliberate. We must be intentional to make sure that we must grow spiritually in Jesus' name. And can I say this? Spiritual growth is a personal responsibility. Just like showering your body. Is a personal responsibility. Brushing your teeth is your personal responsibility. No matter how much you are in love with your husband, no matter how love you love your children, they have to eat their food for them to grow. Where's the pika chakula? Na mama kikura chakula watoto na muzi wa amini ya kuamba watashiba. Haiwezekan iyo nyumba itatoka vita vile ujawa yona. Because you have to personally take your plate. You have to personally take your spoon and feed yourself to your maximum. Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Otherwise, you're going to die physically. So, 
Personal growth, spiritual growth is a personal responsibility. And so we must stop shifting blame that were it not for my husband, I would have grown spiritually. Were it not for my wife, I would have grown spiritually. Were it not for my son who disturbs me and my daughter, I would have gone spiritually. You are lying. Pers spiritual growth is a personal responsibility. How come you are able to shower? And because you showered yesterday, you cannot say you are not going to shower today. Otherwise, you are going to stink. That consciousness you have of showering yourself every day, even the time of winter when it is very cold and the body is not even getting dirt, you are just in the house, is the same consciousness you have to put in your mind and in your heart. I must study the word of God. I must hear the word of God on a daily basis for you to grow spiritually. Otherwise, what you are hearing so much is what grows in your life. If you are full of junk, clutter, you know, a lot of uh, soap operas, a lot of movies, let me tell you the truth, you manifest that. So we must be intentional about our spiritual growth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pastor Munene cannot grow on my, sp on my behalf, my spiritual life, my relationship with God. I've got to be, I've got to be, to, to be, to be serious with it. Praise the Lord. So the importance of the word of God is because you are born of the word. That's why the word of God is very important. You are born of the word. Let's go in the book of James 1 verse 18. James 1 verse 18. James 1 verse 18. James 1 verse 18. We want to see how are we born out of the word. James 1 verse 18. The Bible says, Of his own will has he begotten me, has he begotten you, with the word of truth that we should be a kind of firstborns or first fruit of his creation. So the way God has gotten you, has bathed you, another version is actually to bath. If you can be able to get me another version that talks about uh, of his own. Has he bathed you? He, have he, has he begotten you? So how did, bego how did God be beget you? How did God get you to his kingdom? Through the word of truth. Of his own uh, will has he given birth to us. By the word of the truth. So the word of God in my heart. The word of God in my mind is the truth of who God is in my life. It's a true reflection of who God is in my life. How can I ignore the word? How can you ignore the word of God? So we are an offspring of the word of God. We came from the word. Because the word of God is God. And it is true because he said, let us make man in our own image. So we come from God and God has given us his instruction through his word of, through his word on how we need to live as born again Christian how we need to live so that we can please God only so you are born of the word of truth hallelujah hallelujah can you tell yourself I'm born of the word of truth hallelujah and so that means if the word of truth is guiding you is directing you you are a truthful person we shall not find born again Christian who are liars. Because the word of God is the word of truth. And what you are made of is what you become. Praise the Lord. And we are not just any other. We are the first, the first fruit of the creation of God. There is no other being that God has invested his power, his grace, his anointing apart from a human being. And so we are very important in the sight of God. We are the people who don't see the importance of God. But God sees our importance. And that's why he sent his son Jesus Christ to come and die on the cross. So that you and me can be found of him. We are born of the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you tell you, yourself, I'm born of the word. Of the word. Hallelujah. Amen. So the word of God is very important. So I'm born of the word. And that must get into our nerves. That must get to our conscience. We must be aware about that. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two, the importance of the word of God in your life is that the word of God is food for your spiritual growth. The word of God is food for your spiritual growth. If you want to grow spiritually, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to be a woman and a man of the word. That is what makes your, your spiritual growth grow. 
It's not so much of WhatsApp, Facebook, you know, Instagram, Twitter. Those things are just, you know, um, world system. What makes a believer grow, grow spiritually, you mature, you mature, is the word of God. And so the word of God must become an integral part of you. You must make sure that every day you feed yourself with the word of God. That is the food of your heart. That is the food of your mind. That is the food that sustains your body. So that sicknesses and diseases can stay at bay. Because the word of God is ruling and dominating your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the word of God is food for my spiritual growth. That is in the book of Matthew 4.4. 4. What did Jesus say? Jesus said a very important word about the word of God. Matthew 4.4. 4. Matthew 4.4. 4. And Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. I want you to see from that verse, Jesus was talking about two men that are, that are one. He's talking of two sides of a man. He's talking about the physical part of you, which is your body, that feeds on bread. Then he speaks about your heart or your spirit man that feeds on the word of God. And so the Bible says, if you're going to live, Jesus said, he said it, if you're going to live, I want to tell you, you don't live by bread. You don't live by pizza. You don't live by, by, um, or, uh, you don't live by rice. You don't live by all these foods we have. We live by the word of God. Much more as we feed the body with the bread, you've got to feed your spirit man, your inward man, with the word of God on a daily basis. And this word is the word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And I want to ask every one of us, how much of the word of God have you received this week that will make you to keep on proceeding on with your journey of faith? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the word of God is what? It's food. The way you sit down and you eat your food, you take your breakfast, you take your lunch, and in between you take even snacks, then in the evening you take even dinner, you've got also to feed your spirit man so that he can grow. That is the food that makes the spirit man grow. And he's able to grow even more stronger than your mind, even more stronger than your body. So when you don't study the word of God, when you don't meditate on the word of God, when you are not a doer of the word of God, what happens? You your spirit man becomes emaciated and you begin to be defeated by the systems of the world. So the word of God is very important. Jesus said in the book of uh, Matthew, Matthew 6, I think 65, he said that the words that I speak to you, they are life and they are spirit. So the word of God is life and spirit. The words that I speak to you, they are alive and they are... So for us to stay alive, for us to stay alive spiritually, we need the word of God. For us to stay spiritually strong, we need the word of God. How important the word of God is. How important the word of God is. We have ignored the word of God for a long time, but not now. We need it more than ever. Otherwise, the body will die because the body cannot sustain the spirit man. But the spirit man, when he has the word of God, he is able to sustain the body. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Neno la mungu ni chakula yako, ya kiroho, kama unataka kugro, otherwise utaka ukiwa na utoto, na umeokoka 20 years, 30 years, Five years, three months, and you are not growing. And that's why some of us, the things we were struggling with five years ago, three years ago, we are still struggling with them. Why? We have not matured. We are still babes. We are still drinking milk. Praise the Lord. We need to deliberately create quality time to make sure that we feed ourselves with the word of God so that whatever challenge comes along our way, we are equipped with the word of God and we know what to use for whatever challenge that comes along our way. Praise the Lord. How important the word of God is. It is food for my spiritual growth. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number three. 
The word of God is the building material for your spiritual growth. The word of God is the building material for your life. That is in the book of Acts. Acts 20 verse 32. The building material. The way we assemble, you know, we assemble the stones. We assemble everything. The word of God is the building material. Without materials, you cannot build. And so we need to build ourselves. We need to build our minds. We need to build our, our hearts. We need to build our body with the word. And so what does the word of God say? Can we all read the word? And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. The word is able to build you up, not to build you down. Some of us are feeling down. You feel depressed. You feel frustrated. You feel disappointed. What you need at that particular time, you need the word of God to build you up. Not to build you down. Because the systems of this world, they have a way of bringing us down. But the word of God is the only agent in this world that is able to build you and me up. 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 In other words, we move from glory to glory. From strength to strength. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How important the word of God is. There is nothing in this world that can build you up. Because there are things you will hear. There are things you will see that will break your heart. But when you have the word of God in your heart, when you have the word of God dominating your thinking, this is what the word of God does. It builds you up. So in other words, you are always strong. There is no place for weakness. There is no place for loneliness because the word of God builds you up. Hallelujah. The word of God is the building material for your life. If you're going to build with anything else, it will come down. If you use money to build your life, you will come down. If you use education to bring, you know, to build yourself up, you will come down. The only agent that is able to build you and become strong, no matter what comes along your way, it is the word of God. How important the word of God is. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So what are you building your life? When you receive bad news, when you are going through challenges and crises of life, what do you use? You call friends. You discuss the challenge. And at the end of the day, it keeps rotating. And from there, people begin to talk about it. That is not the way to build your life. You've got to use the word of God. Paul is saying, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. He's recommending us to the, to the word of his grace. Because the word of God is able to give you grace to endure temptation. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that's why James was saying, count it all joy when you pass through diverse temptation. How can we count it joy when we are passing through tribulation? Because we are built up by the word of God. Praise the Lord. In other words, you're supposed to have joy one, joy two, joy three, joy four. When you are passing through challenges, the Bible says count it all joy. But look at it. We count it all loss. We count even frustrated. We count we are down. Why? Our language is different from the language of the word of God. And that's why our lives, there's a disconnect between us and our spiritual life. You find that the way, the way you, you, are, you are supposed to be as a Christian, when we live with you, you are not. Your words are not consistent with the word of God. Because you have not taken the word of God, or I have not taken the word of God as a building material. Hallelujah. Ah, the importance of the word of God. Praise the Lord. So if you want to build your spiritual life, you've got to use the word. Can we read that verse again? Kindly. Uh, in the book of Acts, the same. Uh -huh. I wish we can stay more on the word. More on the word. Uh -huh. And now brethren, brethren, these are born again. These are not non-believers. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. And give me an inheritance among them that are sanctified. What is the inheritance that God has given you? He has given you healing. He has given you peace. Things that cannot be bought by money. They are only brought by investing your life in the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. The word of God is the building material for my spiritual life. 
The word of God is the building material for my family. The word of God is the building material for my children. The word of God is the building material for my business. The word of God is, the, is everything. You can apply it everywhere. It builds. It builds. It builds. And it doesn't build down. It builds you up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell yourself I'm built up. I'm built up. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So then there is nothing like counting losses when you are in the kingdom. You must always count, you know, profits because the word of God keeps building. And you know why we are built? It's because there are so many things that, you know, the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them from all. So these afflictions, when they come, they leave you broken. They leave you, you know, um, scattered at times. But when you know how to build yourself up with the word of God, you know, the word of God is able to pick up all these broken pieces in your mind and bring them together and you rise again. There is hope even when a tree is cut. Why? The word of God builds you up. So, aijalishi umekatwa marangapi. Kama ukona neno, neno litakujenga juu. Neno alijengangi mtu chini, linakujenga wende juu na juu na juu zaidi. Praise the Lord. What a God we have to worship. What a king we have to live for. God is a good God. He builds us up. When friends are bringing us down, God builds you up by his word. Amen. So you've got to make deposit of the word of God. You've got to make a deliberate decision to make sure that the word of God is the standard for your life. Nothing less, nothing more. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the way to conquer this world. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number, th number four. The word of God is the cleansing agent and the renewing agent of your life. Ndiyo inakusafisha. Neno la mungu ndiyo inatusafisha. The cleansing agent, the only cleansing agent that can clean a man is not water. It's not, you know, liquid soap. It's not showering. Praise the Lord. It's not sleeping. You cannot. You will wake up and find challenges still waiting for you. It's not drinking a little. Sio kukunywa pombe. At my, my do you, you want to cleanse it? It doesn't. It doesn't, brethren. And I'm going to show you that in the word of God. So the word of God is the only cleaning agent that God has, has released on the face of the earth. So that whatever has contaminated your mind, whatever has contaminated your heart, you're going to clean yourself using the word and then renew your mind once again so that your mind can be in sync with the word of God. Jesus said in the book of John 15 verse 3, you are now clean because of the word of God that you have received from me. That's what Jesus said. You are now clean. John 15 verse 3. Can we read the word? One, two, we read. Now you are clean. Uh-huh. Now, not tomorrow, not yesterday. So the word of God is for now. And the word for now is, an, you need another word for tomorrow, now. Praise the Lord. So Jesus said, you are now clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So some of us, you could have, you could have been addicted to some things. Maybe you are addicted to pornography. You are addicted to masturbation. You are addicted to lesbianism, to homosexuality. The only thing that can clean that clutter, homos, you know, drinking, you know, smoking, you know, adultery, all this fornication, only the word of God under the face of the earth is able to clean the mind of a person and make it anew and afresh again. Amen. Nothing else. Nothing less. And that's why some of us have memories of when we were young, something wrong that was done to you. And I don't know why the brain always records the wrong things. Why can't you remember something good that was done to you when you were, when you were a teenage? Can you see how the devil messes our lives? Because he wants us, we keep taking the wrong track. Because when you grew up, though there were challenges, there were also good things, though there were not many. Lakini like ukumbukangi, Unakumbuka tu mambo yote uliambiwa, ulifanyiwa, mabaya yote. Na unaikumbuka hata siku, hata unaikumbuka mwaka. Unaieleza ni kama ilifanywa jana. Na ni kitu ya 20, 30, 40 years ago. Why? Because we have not allowed the word of God to clean us. 
The only cleaning agent for your mind, the only cleaning agent for your past and your present and the future is the word of God. How important the word of God is. We can't ignore the word. We can't. We ignore the word we are finished, brethren. We ignore the word we are, we are done. So the word of God must become an integral part of you. It must be part of the way the hand is part of the body. The way your leg is part of your body. That's the way you are, the word of God should be in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Romans 12 verse 2. Romans 12 verse 2. Because we are talking of it cleaning us. The word of God cleaning us. The word of God giving, renewing our mind. The Bible says, and do not be conformed to this world. I like the one which says, do not be conformed to the pattern, to the system of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that acceptable perfect will of God. So anytime you study the word of God from today, anytime you make the word of God the most important thing in your life, something happens in your mind. A renewal. Renewal. I want to see renewal. It's like renews. Already kuna news that are not consistent with the word of God, that are dominating your thinking. But when you introduce the word of God, it pushes that and brings renewal. So the word of God is able to remove all the pain, all the pain past, all the hurting relationship you have gone through, all the, the pain you have gone through in your marriage, what you have gone through with your children, what you have gone through in your past with your brothers and sisters, you know, enmity even among siblings. All that, the mind is able to be renewed by the word of God. Because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews 12, of Hebrews 4 verse 12, that the word of God is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, dividing asunder the soul and the spirit, and it is a designer of the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. Only the word of God can clean you up. If in the world we have Clorox, how many people know Clorox? Jik, Jik. In Kenya, we call it Jik. Yeah. We have pine saw. We have lye saw. To make sure that it is 99.9 germs, they are cleared physically, especially a time like now of COVID. And you are so sure that when you sanitize your hands, when you clean a place, you are, you are even confident to use that gadget. Can you, things made of men, they have given us belief such that when you wipe it, when you wipe such a microphone, you can use it without even fearing corona. Let me tell you the truth. Do you want to remove any corona of the mind? Corona of the heart? Which cannot be removed by Clorox and pine so. Friends, we've got to accept the word of God to conform our mind. You know, to transform our mind. And we stop the world from conforming us. And if you look at that, there's a word you can see there. The world cons us. It cons and forms. I want you to look at the word. The word con, conning, it denies you, you are right, then it forms you. But the word of God, trans, trans is to change and then form you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you getting that? Yes. Can you see that? Yes. Thank you, Daudi. So the word of God, the, the, the world system cons us. Conning is what was yours, you don't enjoy it. Yes. When you say you are conned your money. That means that money you had planned to use it, but you are conned, isn't it? And when you are conned, what happens? You know, uh, you are formed to believe everybody else is a con. Anybody who borrows money from now for one year, you might not give. Because it, a formation has been made in your mind that people borrow money and they don't return, isn't it? So, but the word of God is the only agent that is able to transform you. Trans means to change you completely. And then renew your mind. Then that same mind now is able to know the, 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 the acceptable, the perfect will of God. Yes. The good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. If that is, becomes your portion, why wouldn't you not live a victorious and a glorious life? Yes. Yes. The word of God is very important. Very, very, very important. Yes. Another thing that the word of God does, can we put the book of Jeremiah 23, 29? Jeremiah 23, 29. I wish we had more time to share the word of God. Pastor, when I come, I want you to give me one hour. We share the word. I'm telling you the truth. It's going to be great. Wow. I want to show you something. The Bible says, or can we all read the word? Jeremiah 23, 29. 
Is not my word like as fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rocks into pieces. Powerful. So the word of God is a hammer. And you know what a hammer is? A hammer is for destruction. A hammer is to fix. So the word of God, the Bible says, my word is not like fire. So when you have the word of God in you, it is able to act like a hammer in the physical and break every rock into pieces. In other words, any programming that is in you, that is in your mind, spirit of anger. Kama kuna roho mimi ni meona imekaria wa kristo, ni roho ya anger. Ora karaga, oka haisa sturu. And it's serious. It's very serious. And this place, I'm telling you that we need to do something about anger. And it seems like something that cannot be... People are suffering with anger. Ukikasirika, umekasirika, nothing can bring you down. The more you are brought down, the more unawaka. Why? Because you don't have the word in you. Controlling your mind. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, now, that anger, that bitterness, that unforgiveness, that ungodliness, the word of God is a hammer, and it's able to break every rock, every hindrance, Anything that is in you that is preventing you from receiving the goodness of the Lord, the word of God is able to break it into pieces. Amen. Into pieces. Amen. The word of God is a hammer in your life. Not a hammer when it is on the, on the written pages. It is a hammer, praise the Lord, when you use it as a Christian. How important the word of God is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Another thing about the word of God is the word of God brings light in your life. The word of God brings light. Mwangaza. Jesus said in the book of John 8 verse, verse 12. John 8 verse 12. Can we go there very fast? And then on that, put Psalms, Psalms 119, 105, and 130. But let's begin with that one. Yeah, John 8 verse 12. Can we read the word? Jesus spoke and said, can we read one, two, we read? And saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So when you have the word of God, there is no darkness in you. There is no lies. There is no fakeness. There is no pretense. Praise the Lord. You are real. Who you are in the private is who you are in the public. Because you are the light. And the purpose of the light is to make things visible. We are able to know what kind of a person are you. We don't find that, you know, we thought you are godly. And then we find that you are not godly. Because Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who believes in you, are you a believer? Hallelujah. Are you a believer? Yes. So when you are a believer, you shall not walk in darkness. So the question is, why is it that we have darkness among the Christian? They, they have not invested in the word. And so we don't have the light of life. In other words, you are walking in confusion. When there is no light, even in a house, you unaenda ukigonga gongo na vitu. Jujui kitu iko wapi. Are you getting that? The reason why we will walk very well is because the light is able, we are able to see where we are walking. Praise the Lord. And I'm telling you the truth, if you listen to this sermon, it will solve even the problems of the marriage. We don't even need a couple's meeting pastor. This will solve everything. Because if I'm the light... Before, I'm a, I'm, I'm a light. Pastor Munene is also a light. When we, meet, when we make a marriage, we are two both lights. So light is in a darkness, Wapi. And we have believed in Jesus Christ. Can you see that? So when you find darkness in your relationship, you find darkness in your finances, it's an indicator. The word of God is not leading you. Someone else has taken the place. And it's the devil. He's the one who walks in darkness. Praise the Lord. Psalms, Psalms 119 verse Verse 105, Psalms, 19, Psalms 119, 105. Can we go there? And then after that, we go to 130. Uh huh. The Bible says, can we read the word? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So the word of God, can you see what the, the word of God is a lamp? The word of God is a lamp. So why are we walking in darkness? It's because we don't have the word to your feet so that you don't stumble. Praise the Lord. And then it says, it's my light to my path. So the, the, the path of the just, 
Proverbs 4, 18. It's like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. That is your life. That is my life when the word of God is leading us. Amen. The word of God brings light. Praise the Lord. Amen. But some of us, we don't know what we are doing. We don't know what if you only expose yourself to the word of God, darkness will go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God is very important, brethren. Amen. The word of God is a lamp to my feet, Susan, and a light to my path. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 130 of the same. The entrance of thy word brings what? Light. And that's why we are saying the word of God is light to you. Not even first of all to other people. Not even to your husband. Not even to your... First of all, that light must be right to you first. You, the believer. And then the Bible says it gives understanding to the simple. Amazing truth. Oh, me, I want to be a woman of the word. The entrance of God's word. And how does the word of God enter through us? Through hearing and hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. So the entrance of God's word brings light. In the book of Matthew 5, verse 14, Jesus said a very important verse. I wish we can go there and see how the word of God is a, is a light to us. He said a very important thing. Uh, Matthew 5, verse 14. Thank you. Can we read the word? One, two, we read. I am the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Imagine Jesus calling you. You are the light of the world. The world, we are not talking about lighting like this light. Because that's what people think is the physical light. Light is giving direction. You are, you are the director of people who are in the world. Those who are not born again, you are a light to them. And then the Bible says, you, one believer only. The Bible equips a believer who has the word of God as a city. Can you imagine? So you can imagine how many cities we are here. You alone, God calls you a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. So, kwanini katukujuangi church? That means, umeenda saidi ya darkness, hauko saidi ya light, because you are called a city. You can't ignore Sierra City. It's just, you just see it. Praise the Lord, because even the lights are shining so far. that You are now greater than Sierra City. You are greater than Washington. You are greater than any other state in the United States of America. You are a light and a city. You can't ignore the city of Nairobi. You can't. The Bible calls one believer a city like Nairobi city. So you can imagine if only we all believed in the word of God and acted on the word of God. This world would be full of light. There will be no darkness. In other words, there will be no devil worshippers. There will be no atheists. Because everybody, wherever we are, we are shining the light of the word. We are shining the light of Christ. And that's why our case will be very severe with God. Because we knew the truth, but we refused to live by that truth. People went to hell, and they were near you just because you could not make your light shine. And the Bible says what, verse 15? Neither do men light candle and put it under a, a bowl, but, uh, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. So you can imagine if here we are men and women who are controlled by the word of God, we are supposed to, there should be a lot of light. In other words, light means direction, guidance. There should be a lot of unity because all of us, every one of us is emitting light. Can you see that? Uh -huh. So we are brightening wherever we go. When we come to America, we change America because we are the light. And the light in you is the same light in me. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says, was verse 16, let's go on. Uh-huh. One, two, and I want you to personalize that word. Uh-huh. Let my light so shine before men that they may see my good works and glorify my Father which is at in heaven. So when you have the word of God, you begin to shine. In other words, you cannot be ignored. Even if right now we don't know you, the word of God will put you up because you are a city that carries a substance that the world needs. Amen. And every one of us, we are that. There is nobody who is a favorite in the kingdom of God. 
that you may see we are your good works. In other words, there's nothing that bad that should come out of a Christian. Your talk must be good. Your character is good. The way you carry yourself good. The way you talk to brethren is good. The way you handle your wife is good. The way you handle brethren, good, good. That they may glorify your father who is at in heaven. But what is happening? Because we have failed to, to get the importance of the word of God in our lives. We have turned to be darkness. People even wonder, is this one still born again? The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. From today, we are the light of the world. And that light must shine so that everybody can glorify the Father which is at in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say I'm the light to myself and to the world? Oh, through the word of God. Can you imagine? Through the, na, na kuna mtu hapa, hawezi pata neno. Hata iko kwa simu yako. Uko na Bible verses, na uja wai atafungua iyo Bible. Juo nangi importance yake. From today, we must make the word of God the only thing that brings importance in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Another thing that the word of God does, I don't know which point is that, the word of God gives you power and authority. That is in the book of Luke. Luke 10 verse, verse 19. Luke 10 verse 19. Luke 10 verse 19. Yeah, Jesus, when you are born again, you are not someone who is supposed to fear. Because something, I want you to, power and authority. If you can get a version that talks about that, I will really appreciate yeah, so the word of God gives you power and authority. You have power and authority. Can we read the word right now? One, two, we read. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Can you imagine? Nothing, behold you, not, not preachers. This is not a scripture for preachers. And evangelists and apostles and prophets. No. This one is to every believer. And Jesus said that he has given us power and authority. And nothing by any means shall hurt us. So the question is, why are you being hurt? Then you don't know who you are in Christ. When you know who you are in Christ, you fix the devil where he belongs to. Because you have been given power. The power is the power of the Holy Spirit. The authority is the authority of the word of God. The two go hand in hand. The authority of the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Because every believer has indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in them. You are not alone. You are not alone. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so you have been given power and authority to trend upon those are scorpions and other, those are witchcraft powers. You know, those principalities that are so high. The power has been given unto you. Can we go to the book of Mark 16 verse 17 on the same vein? Mark 16, verse 17. Mark 16, verse 17. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Can we read? Signs will accompany those who believe. Are you a believer? Can we agree? Are we all believers? So these signs will accompany those who believe. Number one. Uh -huh. In Jesus' name they shall do what? They shall cast out demons. So, every born again Christian is a demon caster. Who told you there is a certain pastor who is very good in deliverance? You are also good in deliverance. Because you have been given power and authority in the name of Jesus. And every believer has received power, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. You have received the authority that is in the word of God. And so, any time you see demon of anything, the best thing you can do to a demon is to cast it. Don't even speak to it. You cast it. Amen. Praise the Lord. That means what? Even a time like now when there is COVID, when you enter in a place, you declare, you demon of COVID, you are unseen with the physical eyes. But as long as I'm here, I command you to go. And immediately you sanctify the environment and you never get sick in Jesus' name. Amen. That is done by faith. Amen. Because we believe, then we see. We don't see to believe. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, you are a demon caster. So don't call your pastor at night at the child has fever. The child is conversing. Take the power and authority, cast out, and believe that you have the authority of the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Hallelujah. That's who you are. That's what the word of God does. It gives you boldness. It gives you courage. So no matter the challenges that come, you fix them using the authority in the name of Jesus. Because all believers, this sign shall accompany those who believe. I'm a believer, so I'm a demon caster. Can you say that? I'm a believer, and so Jesus has made me a demon caster. And I'm not using my name. I'm using his name. He has given me the power of Anthony to use his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You have power and authority. You are not a weak Christian. There is no place for weakness. There is no place for womanish. Kukua mama, my feelings, my moods. We don't have that in the kingdom. We are all sons. We must be bold. We must be strong. We must be energetic. Praise the Lord. Last and not least, the word of God prolongs your life. Hallelujah. That is so powerful. The word of God prolongs my life. Nothing else is not eating right. It is not having money. The word of God prolongs my life. That is in the book of Deuteronomy 32 from verse 45. We're going to see two verse, three verses, and then we are done. The word of God prolongs my life, my life, my life. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 32, verse 45 to 47. Hey, I want to live long. Not just living, but I want to live long to serve God. This is a scripture you cannot afford to remove it from your eyes. And I want everybody to be very alert as we are preaching. We are now getting to the finishing of our sermon. So can we read the word? One, two, we read. And Moses made an end of speaking of all these words to all Israel. Read on. And he said unto them, set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which we shall command your children to observe to do the words of this law. Read on. For it is not in vain thing for you because it is your life and through this you shall prolong your days in the land which are over Jordan and you shall possess it. Can you see that? So the word of God is not in vain. That is what keeps you moving, my dear. That's what terminates premature death in your life. That's what terminates COVID out of your life. The word of God, nothing else. And that's why the devil has no business with a Christian who is controlled and dominated by the word of God. Because he knows long life is your portion. He says the word of God is not in vain. How many times have we thought the word of God is in vain? Some of us never came for Sunday service. Most people never went even for, because they thought, we are so used to the word until we have taken it for granted and so it has become, it is not in vain. Tell yourself, imagine the word of God is not in vain in you. Yeah, because, and then we are told what? Because it is your life. The word of God is your life. Have you ever thought about it? That the word of God is my life. And then it says, through this word, you shall prolong your days. Prolong your days on earth. Prolong your days on earth. And what are these days that God is speaking? In the book of Genesis 6 verse 3. We want to see what was the mind of God concerning these days. Are you there, my dear? Before we go there, go Psalms 91 verse 16. Then we finish with that. Because only the word of God is able to prolong your life. Nothing else. And so you must be drunk. You must be, you know, there's nothing else that that saturates your life apart from the word of God. Uh, I wanted you to go to the book of Psalms 91 verse 16. Because we have said the word of God is not in vain. The word of God is my life. That's what that scripture has told us. And the word of God prolongs your life. Prolongs your life. And so uh, David said in the book of Psalms 91, verse 16, a verse that we well know. What did he say? With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So before your time, and especially now because this year 2020, there's a spirit of death. Let me tell you the truth. The only arm, the only antidote to death is the word of God. How can you walk out in the morning 
without the word. You must dress yourself with the word. You must dress yourself with the Holy Ghost. Your makeup is the Holy Spirit. So that when you come out, darkness cannot comprehend you. Oh yes, this is the time to be very zealous for the word of God. Never than before in the name of Jesus. So with long life, not short life, shall the Lord satisfy you. Why is he giving us long life? So that we can reach out and be soul winners. We win others to, the, to Christ just as Christ won us to himself. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say long life is my portion? Long life is my portion. Because the word of God is my life. Because the word of God is my life. Hallelujah. And then we finish with Genesis 6 verse 3. Genesis 6 verse 3. Genesis 6 verse 3. Yes. This is so powerful. Oh, yes. I, want, I want to cancel, demystify a notion that has been there in the church for ages. Mm -hmm. But through the power of the Holy Spirit this morning and this evening, we want to cancel a, 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 a teaching that has been there and possess that which God has for us in the name of Jesus. Read Genesis 6 verse 3. Yes. And the Lord God said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for, the, for he is flesh, but his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Kulingana na mungu, binadamu ya yote ambaye ako kwa hii dunia, anastairi kuishi one hundred and twenty years. This is the highest truth. But what has happened, we have taken the preaching of David and believed it. That is in the book of Psalms 90 verse 10. Hebutu yangalia. Na David ni kuhini. Ni ea likuwa na jibia. Tumechukua hiyo mahubiri tunaifanya yetu. Me I'm not living 70 years. I'm not living 80 years. I'm living what the higher truth says. What was said in the beginning Genesis. That my days shall be 120. Na hapa ukiangalia. Hebutu ditena. Nuti kwa hiyo verse. Hiyo verse. Kuna mahali unaona ikiandikuwa. Utaanikuwa kianuriwa. Wewe. Hebutu soma tena. Can we read the word again? Let's read again. And the Lord said. My spirit shall not always strive with man, for he is also flesh, yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty. Ni wapi unaona utakuwa unanikwa, ukianuriwa, ushikwa na dimensia, ushikwa na almanzi, all those diseases. Kuna parking stone, you are shaking. Is there anything there? Thank you. Thank you. We must believe the higher truth. And this truth came before, before David was, this truth was there. The Lord said, the Lord God said, the creator of the universe, the omnipresent, the omniscient, the omnipotent God said, my days, Susan, are 120 years. So if I'm 50 years, I just do 120 minus 50. Nimebaki na miaka ngapi? 70. 70. Huh? 70. Sasa hiyo 70. Na siyo kuzatu na sana, Pastor Mune. Sini kuhubiri mataifa. Yes. Usinyanganiwe. Na tukatae mahubiri ya Daudi, kabisa, in the book of Psalms. Can we go there, Psalms 90 verse 10? We are on a video alisema. Na niye alikuwa na jiambia, tunaichukua, tunaifanya ni yetu. Uh -huh. Can we read? Uh -huh. Is your nesi yake? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That is not my portion in Jesus. I know now a higher truth. This one is a lesser truth. There is a higher truth. So from today, can we make a covenant? Right now, I want you to do prophetically. Can you write 120 years? And that is minimum. You can even go 130. We have seen people, and even 126. So can you do 120? Have you done it? Minus the years you have lived. So no accident, no COVID, nothing. Because the, your days shall be prolonged by the word of God. So if we make the word of God, the, very important in our lives, the word of God has the capacity to give us long life. Amen. Hakuna kukufa. Amen. Hakuna. Na ukatae katika jina la yesu. Bwana yesu wasifiwe. Have you been blessed? Amen. Have you been blessed? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you because of your word. 
we receive the word of God with meekness and gladness in our hearts. And we thank you because we have confessed to you a word that is in us. Father, I pray that the, the benefit and the importance of the word of God will rule and dominate our lives even as we continue serving here on earth. We thank you for what you have made us through your word. We receive that word and we declare that we are what the word of God says. In Jesus' majestic name, we have prayed and believed. Amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Wow, Makofi Mazuri. That is really powerful. It has really pierced in our hearts, in our minds, even in our flesh. It has gone deep into our bones. God bless you, Pastor Susan. Wow, wow. Wow. I've always been ministering and preaching when they are seated. Leo I was seated here. Then I was like, heavily, this is so powerful. Oh, can you see those notes? Kevin, thank you. It is so clear. It is well displayed. God bless you. That's so powerful. God bless you, Pastor. So we needed that. We needed that. And I believe that all of us, it's not in vain. Let us embrace the word of God. Let us develop a culture, a culture whereby we will live by the word of God. Listen the word of God through the audio in your in your phone. You can put it in your car. You can actually read it anytime, even in your phone. That's the only way. God said that He sent His word when they cried for sickness and diseases, that His word may heal them. He had no other word. They cried, Are they sick for COVID? Then the Bible says He sent His word that His word may go and heal them. Psalms 107. And you see, that is the word of God. So, God bless you, Pastor Susan. That is really powerful. I've just fallen in love with the word of God. I'll be mad. I'll be crazy with the word of God. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you. We, didn't, we have not come to an end of that. We have only come to an end of our first service. And uh, very quickly, we are getting into now... Uh, a couple's um, service and I believe that uh, there are people who have already gone back to work but those who are not in a hurry kindly please don't you be in a hurry we need to come back again and uh, get the word uh, get the teaching get the sermon from the same uh, servant of God Pastor Susan and I believe that uh, transformation is inevitable when the word of God comes in because the Bible says at the entrance of the word of God brings light. So without much ado, I want us to stand and give thanks. And then from there, we are going to receive the servant of God after a short break of 10 minutes. Then the servant of God is going to come and minister to all couples. And this will be for all married people, couples, and those with their husbands here and wives and those who are spouses, you are married even though your spouse is not here you are entitled for this seminar, it is purely entitled for married people that's so powerful God bless you I really love that, I really appreciate let's let's give thanks are you blessed? can you say barikiwa? So, just making an announcement. Ukitaka hii maubiri yote, utaipata kwa videography. Seattle videography, ingia pale, like the page. Seattle videography, you're going to have all these teachings. And uh, you'll be blessed. Ukienda pia kwa the Monenes, wana YouTube, kwa Facebook yao. Monen, the Pastor Monene, Pastor Sue, utawapata kwa YouTube na kwa Facebook pia. God bless you. Let's give thanks. Father God, we thank you for this powerful truth that has been directed to our lives because you send your word and your word healed us. We are really blessed to be under this word that has been spoken to us this very day. And now time has come, God, for the very spoken word to turn into flesh. According to John 12, uh, John chapter 1 and verses 14, that your word turn into flesh. God will believe any time your word that turns into fresh, oh God, something greater, something good, something might happens. 
that it gets into a reality, it becomes evidence, touchable in our life. We thank you, God, because of your servant who has already ministered unto us. And I believe, God, even as we go into another session, where, God, you'll be healing, you'll be restoring and redirecting our, our families, our marriages, so, God, we believe the same grace will rest upon your servant, Pastor Susan. Thank you, Father. I bless you, servants, those who are leaving, those who will be going back to work, bless them. And those who are still on Facebook Live, God, I pray that you may bless them. We thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you so much. To Pata to break Kidogo, Alafu, all the married couples, you'll be back. God bless you.